Sweet guys, today we have a really cool interview with Amar from Story Leads. I talk about Story Leads all the time on the channel, and I'm really excited to dive a bit deeper into the whole business model. Amar, welcome to the channel. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So to go ahead and jump right in for people who might not be familiar with Story Leads, what is Story Leads and what do you do specifically with Story Leads? Yeah, so Store Leads is like the yellow pages of e-commerce websites. It's like the Zoom info of e-commerce. Uh, we crawl the internet every day looking for every single e-commerce store we can find around the world. Uh, we sort it in a database. We publish our findings every Sunday. And uh, there's almost 11 million uh, leads at this time in there. We gather all kinds of data on a store, like how many products are on their store, what kind of products they sell, um, you know, roughly how much we think they do in sales per month what apps they have installed. And this is all really good information for sales and marketing people, especially a lot of sales and marketing people build lists of very, very specific leads um, to go after. So it helps them, you know, increase their just sales efforts. And for marketing people, especially it helps them increase their return on investment with any paid channels that they might be uh, doing. So a lot of our customers include agencies and uh, tech companies that service e-commerce stores in some way. Some analysts and investors use this as well to just keep an eye on different e-commerce stores and platforms like Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, et cetera. But if you need leads, if you need data on e-commerce stores, um, store leads is basically the mecca of that. Awesome. Well, sweet. And what is your role specifically of store leads? I know it's a pretty lean company, so I'd love to hear like, what is your area of focus? Yeah. I mean, I do a lot of sales, one-to-one uh, -one demos, marketing, I've been playing around with a lot of uh, paid ads recently. That's been on my mind. Uh, webinars, uh, I do all the support, um, basically any kind of customer or revenue activity. I was just at the trade show in LA e-commerce event. Uh, that was fun. So yeah, sales, marketing, partnerships, support. Sweet. And how long has Store Leads been around? Since 2019. Okay. And it seems like it's really popped up in the like, last year specifically. I remember, you know, I, yeah. I think what it was is like a few agency guys, or at least in my circle, a few agency guys talk about it and more talk about it. It's like a massive compounding. So I, yeah. um, it's crazy how you're like a, just a normal name in the agency space now. It's fast. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, a, a lot of it has been through word of mouth. And I think that speaks a lot about the product. It's, it's just cool. It's like a niche tool. I, I used store leads myself as a user before I joined full time. Uh, I was at Google at the time and I was a sales rep and I was looking for leads to go over after myself as a sales rep. And I found sort of, I couldn't believe it. I remember I was up uh, late at night with my friend in the Google office and I, I found the software. And I remember specifically, I was hanging out with my friend and I tried to download like a million or so leads, like an insane amount of leads, huge CFD file. And I looked at my friend, I was like, there's no way I'll be able to download like 10 million, a million or whatever I was downloading leads. And I downloaded the file, it was like a seven gigabyte CSV file. And we just looked at each other and we're like, this is the craziest thing we've ever seen because it feels feels very niche. It's like a growth hacking tool. And it's it's awesome. Like people that use it, like sales and marketing people that go after e-commerce in some way, they love it and they recommend it to their friends. And there's something secretive and low-key and underground about store leads that I think a lot of people love. Like when you use it. It's purely functional. It doesn't feel commercial at all. Like I said, you can download millions of leads if you wanted to. I don't think I've seen another commercial piece of software allow you to do that, right? So, sure. Well, and I think that's why it's so, it's so punchy when people recommend it to their friends because a lot of the time they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to tell their competitors about it. They don't want their competitors finding out about it. So it's kind of like this, like, you know, nudge, nudge, like don't tell anybody, but, you know, you should check out this tool. So it, it, it's, it has a very punchy effect when people refer their friends to us. And, and that's how we've grown primarily up until now. We're only just now getting into paid marketing and stuff like that. That's crazy. And uh, yeah. am I allowed to ask how many users you guys have had since starting approximately? A lot, <laughs> a, a lot. It's uh, it, it's in the it's it's a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I I'd, I'd also imagine your retention is pretty high. Is like a you know a, a lot of the tools I get I I use them a couple times, but they just they become more novelty even functional. Or Store Leads is one of the few tools that I have probably six people in my company log into every day. Yeah. Um, so I'd imagine your retention is probably through the roof as well. Yeah, it is. Um, it depends on the size of the company that is using our software. 
we have a lot of smaller agencies that might be one or two people that use the software sure. on and off, uh, which people can do. Um, they can sign up for a month. There's no need to renew after a month. We don't do any long-term commitments. Um, I think another reason people refer it so much is because it's like very, very affordable given the value compared to other alternatives for finding leads. And um, yeah, the LTV just varies greatly. Bigger agencies will stay on forever. Um, you know, bigger tech companies will stay on forever. Uh, but it's cool that we have, you know, this kind of like niche following smaller agencies that use it sporadically as well. Well, sweet. And um, one, one question I wanted to ask is obviously, you know, I, I know a few ways to use the tool, like quite a few, but there's so many ways to use it. I'm sure you've seen some really interesting use cases. Do you have any that you could share with us where like, wow, I, yeah. I didn't even know I to do that for my own tool? Yeah, yeah. Well, I so I used to work at Shopify at one point, and that's how I really got into this stuff. And I was a sales rep. I was selling Shopify Plus at the time. And my whole job was to upgrade people from regular Shopify to Shopify Plus. And the, the whole like pitch was basically looking for accounts that just did a million dollars in sales that year. So I'd keep my eye on those accounts and I'd, I'd call them and say, you know, congratulations, you hit a million dollars in sales. You're now qualified for Shopify Plus. Are you interested in seeing a demo? And, and people were really excited about that. It was like this weird kind of phenomenon because it was a, a sales call, but people were really excited to see a demo and sign up for Shopify Plus because it, it came with some kind of status to be qualified for Shopify Plus. And that was true. You had to be qualified for Shopify Plus. Um, if, if the account was too small or it, it showed signals of potentially churning, you'd have to get your manager to sign off on them upgrading Shopify Plus. So everything that I was saying was completely true. And, and the, the status that came along with being qualified to upgrade Shopify Plus was true. Um, and so people would kind of brag about that. It was kind of like similar to how I compared to American Express when, when they call people and they say, you're qualified for the black card. You know, that's yeah. why people are happy to get the black card. But um, eventually the pool dried up of accounts that I, you know, did a million dollars a year. And so I still wanted to sell more. And I, I was looking for other accounts that, you know, they haven't hit a million dollars a year yet, but maybe they will hit a million dollars a year sooner or they showed some kind of signal of blowing up. So I look for accounts that, um, you know, have a high number of social media followers or saw a huge uptick in social media followers recently, or maybe they didn't have a great sales year, but they had a great sales day or a great sales hour or something like that. Um, maybe they were featured in the press, uh, all, kinds of, all, all kinds of things, right? So I built these reports and I had a lot of success doing that as a sales rep at Shopify and I learned a few things. So um, a few really good reports for all sales and marketing people to know about is to check to see any stores that have recently replatformed. Um, if you put yourself in the shoes of somebody that's replatforming, maybe they're on Magento and they're switching to Shopify. That profile is somebody who is, uh, you know, kind of frustrated with all the upkeep of uh, a Magento store, keeping up with all the security patches, writing custom code, you know, leaning on developers so much. Uh, maybe they want to go to more of like a plug and play, easy to use, WYSIWYG type platform like Shopify. So that's, that's that profile. Um, versus the opposite, where somebody who's using Shopify might migrate to Magento because they want more flexibility, right? So knowing that, you can um, pitch them in different ways. Maybe uh, your company specializes in helping people with their marketing efforts, right? And, and you'd like, I don't know, help with SEO. Companies that have recently replatformed um, their SEO tanks, and they put this off sure. forever. You know, maybe, um, maybe they know in the future Shopify is going to be better for them, but they don't want to go through the hurdle of, you know, redesigning their website and uh, buying a whole new tech stack, which is another reason you want to look for companies that have recently replatformed. They need to buy a new tech stack. So they put this off forever, but when they finally do get around to replatforming, they're on a buying spree. So it's a really good time to get in front of them. With store leads, you can um, build a report of all the stores that have migrated in the last week, let's say, and you can have that automatically running. So every Sunday you can get an email notification of all the stores that have replatformed. And, and maybe you, you can filter that for certain personas like stores that sell swimwear that have a certain number of social media followers. Stores that have um, been recently created is another good report. So, you know, put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's creating a Shopify store. There's a huge batch of them that are just playing around and, um, you know, they're just getting into entrepreneurship for the first time sure. and they might not have any budget to buy anything. But there's a subset of that group that might be already established brand. So I'll give an example, let's say, um, you know, a traditional clothing store that sells all their clothes in boutique shops around America. They, they, 
they've done it through wholesale forever and they, they just haven't seen the need to go direct to consumer. And maybe they go direct to consumer for the first time, but they're already bringing their fan base with them. They're already bringing their employees with them. They're bringing their inventory with them and, and their social media pages if they have any with them. So that's a, that's a great um, brand to help out with their direct consumer efforts because they're getting into that for the first time. So the way you can build that report is to look for all the stores that have recently been created that have a high number of social media followers. Earlier, I was talking about how I was helping people upgrade to Shopify Plus. That's another great report. So looking for you know companies that have recently upgraded um, from regular Shopify to Shopify Plus, that shows that they're on some kind of growth journey and that they're doing well. So, I mean, looking for companies that have certain apps installed, like expensive apps, and especially, you know, if, if they if they just installed like Salesforce Commerce Cloud, right? That, that's a really good signal. Um, for agencies, looking for stores that have recently added a pixel, like a TikTok pixel, um, Facebook pixel, Google pixel, even other related technologies like the Google Tag Manager, um, you know, it shows some kind of intent that they're getting into marketing. And we know that people that get into some of these new paid channels for the first time, like LinkedIn, LinkedIn is so complicated, right? So if you know that somebody just installed a, a, a LinkedIn pixel on their store yesterday, maybe the messaging is, hey, we help um, XYZ type stores uh, with their LinkedIn marketing. We know getting over the learning curve can be difficult. There's like a thousand little buttons that you need to press and know about and conversion tracking is a pain, et cetera. We can help you with attribution. We know you're probably done with this this week. like. You know, so I, th I think just being extremely relevant. Um, I'm not a fan of like personalizing things over personalizing things because I think the trade off is your time. But if you can find a way to uh, be scalable by um, by talking about events that happened recently and you know about these events that happened recently because StoreLink is telling you about them, you can add that to your messaging and it's, it's that much more impactful, probably increase your conversion rate. Those are some awesome use cases. I've used a couple of those, but there's, there's definitely some stuff I didn't consider there. Um, like the the platform migration, but it does make sense. I um I've even just migrated from ClickFunnels to WordPress on like our agency website, and yeah, we had to get we had to get new plugins, we had to get some new software, we had to do some. So I, those are some really really good ideas. Um, one one question I want to ask about the future of Store Leads is what are some exciting features you guys are working on that you can share that might be coming out soon? Yeah, one that I'm really excited about is uh, integration with Zapier because I just see it being used in so many different ways. Uh, when you integrate with Zapier, you're essentially integrating with like thousands of other things. And sure. so I'm really excited about this idea of a Slack group. And maybe you have a, a Slack channel called Competitive Intel. And you get a ping in that channel whenever a specific store like adds one of your competitor's apps, for example. Or uh, maybe you have another channel called Hot Leads, which is like all the, the sales leads in your territory that are estimated to be doing over $100,000 in sales per month. If a store is doing, you know, right below that one week, they're not going to be pinged in that Slack channel. But, you know, if the next week they take over that 100K mark, then they're going to be added to the report that you've built and thus, you know, sent to Zapier and then maybe you have Slack connected and then you can have like this hot leads channel go off and people can talk about that lead and like add each other or whatever. And also, I think it'll be really good for uh, a lot of technology companies to keep an eye on their existing customer base, because we know that a lot of technology companies have features that are only compatible with certain plans. Like uh, one of the differences between Shopify and Shopify Plus is the ability to access the checkout page. So if you had an app that like had some features on the rest of the pages, pages but it had some kind of like thing or, you know, that, that is added to the checkout page. Sure. You can get like a, a ping in a Slack channel of all your existing customers um, who have just upgraded Shopify Plus and now the account managers can like reach out to them and be like, oh, it's like you just upgraded Shopify Plus. You know, we have this checkout feature. You're already a customer of ours. Why don't you enable it, right? So there's all kinds of use cases with this after integration. Um, we're going to be integrating with other CRMs in the future as well. Uh, right now we have an integration with HubSpot and uh, Salesforce where we get requests for closed IO and pipe drive. Uh, so we'll be adding those. And then it's going to be really exciting. Uh, Right now, we're like the mecca of e-commerce websites. Uh, in the future, we'd love to be like the mecca of all e-commerce data, including product data. And I think that'll help you with your reporting because, um, you know, maybe you're interested in all the stores that have a specific item on their store. You know, sure. it'll just it'll take the level of reporting um, like to another level. So, and then, oh, another thing is... I was really excited about this, the personal data vendors. So the question that we get all the time is, 
Um, you know, store lease is great because you get all this e-commerce data, but there's no personal contact information. So kind of like the backtrack, we, we have a lot of e-commerce uh, data. We do have email addresses and phone numbers in the database, but there is generic email addresses and phone numbers sure. or every email address and phone number we can find on the website. Uh, we don't collect any personal information. We usually find these email addresses like in the footer of the website or the contact page of the website. Um, and even if we do find like a personal email address, we just, we strip it away. They're all like info ads, support ad email addresses. They're great email addresses if you're going after smaller companies. Like, um, you know, if you email support at storyleads.app, at the time of this recording, maybe in the future will be different, but um, it goes to me, right? So I'm, it would work in this case, but if you're going after like Nike, it'll never work. So um, we're integrating with third-party uh, personal data vendors that already sell personal data. And so the idea is you can use store leads to build all these like super, super specific lists to find those needle in the haystack leads, like the ones I was telling you about, you know, sorts that have recently replatformed, blah, blah, blah. And then you can combine that data with a personal data vendor, um, like Apollo.io. We already have Apollo integrated today um, to build rules like, you know, um, finding their CEOs. Uh, you know, if you can't find their CEO, find their VP of marketing. If you can't find their VP of marketing, um, find like a sales manager. If you can't find them, fall back on the generic email address that store leads has because any email address is better than none. You can build these like workflows and these rules by integrating personal data vendors. So you combine the store leads data with personal data from another company. And maybe you, you combine multiple personal uh, data companies. Like maybe you, you try to find their CEO at Apollo first. In the future, we want to add more integration. So um, integrations like Zoom Info, uh, Lucia, uh, Snow, Rocket Reach, et cetera. So you could say, you know, try to find the CEO first at Apollo because it, the, the credits are cheap there. If you can't find them sure. there, Zoom Info, then fall back on finding the VP of marketing at Apollo. And you can build these rules. So in the future, that'll be way more sophisticated with integration with the personal data vendors. For Legion agencies like myself, that will save us a lot of time. So I'm, I'm happy to hear about the personal uh, data. I think the most out of those features, that, that sounds very cool. Well, I, I tell you what, Marv, this has been awesome. I really appreciate coming on. I know we like to keep these interviews short, snappy, and to the point. We've gotten actionable ideas. We've got some exciting things coming soon. Learned a bit about how you got into the company. As a last question, um, where can listeners go to learn more about Story Leads? Do you have any socials of your own yeah. I can link in the description? Yeah, a lot. Um, so the YouTube channel, uh, I'm pushing myself to upload a video every day because more and more often agencies, especially, are asking me for list building ideas. And so I want to upload uh, ideas for how you can find really specific leads in there and, and just like advanced tips for your outbounding process, marketing process, things like that. It, it, it won't just be um, finding leads. I, I want to post more content around like how you can use the data as well. Um, so maybe in the future, I'll, I'll make more content specifically on like how to target specific e-commerce stores on, on Google or Facebook or whatever. So the YouTube channel is good. Um, my email address, our email address, uh, support at storeleads.app. I uh, check that email throughout the day, every day. And what do you think? I think I should get more active on Twitter. I feel like- uh, Twitter's great, yeah. 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 Twitter's a lead yeah. magnet. Yeah, I don't, I don't really post on there much right now, but um, maybe I should get on there more because I know a lot of agency people on Twitter. So uh, I'll, I'll leave my Twitter and uh, my LinkedIn as well. Okay, sweet. I'll make sure all those links are included. If you want to sign up for store leads, there'll be a link below to sign up. Well, Amar, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. It's been great. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. All right.